Aloha and mahalo from the Big Island of Hawaii. How should I gather and present my thoughts upon arrival and observation of the people and places I've had the good fortune of hearing from and about and seeing the past month? It's been five years since I last set foot in Hawaii, with most of my impressions from the last adventure spent here still fresh in my mind, and truth be told, I've changed more in those five years than this place will ever change in the foreseeable future, that future being from now until the end of time. Or so your intrepid walker of the earth is presumptuous enough to commit to here. It's an innocuous enough statement in comparison to one of the handful of crazy stories I'll relate here, which spins into crazy territory after someone poses one of the most innocent questions to someone else you could imagine. Without further ado, on to the festivities. There's an area of the Big Island called Puna. It's a district in the southeastern part of the island, south of Hilo, with Kilauea, the active volcano in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park in the vicinity. Due to volcanic activity and other natural occurrences, the knowledge of which I'll never be privy to because I'm not a geologist and I don't care to do rudimentary research on the subject, the real estate is relatively cheap, even in terms of bumblescrew heartland of America, where no one would dream of living unless they were born there. And it's hot and humid, Florida Keys humid. Cheap land leads to all kinds of enter enterprising people looking to live off the grid, leave the rat race behind, create a new American dream, which in reality is a drug-fueled, wild, wild west, new age, hippy-dippy, lighter-than-air nightmare of ignorance and violence, all wrapped up in a bow of poverty. We're talking about water catchment poor, where you will find all sorts of unsavory characters jumped up on crystal meth and hallucinogens. A cocktail from hell if there ever was one. The acid is categorized as before Jerry died and after Jerry died. Jerry Garcia is a Christ-like linchpin of history in the drug culture. Sometimes a batch is made according to before Jerry died standards, but usually it's after Jerry died, take what you can get. You have to see into the eyes of these people, and then to even conjecture what's going on in their minds, proceed at your own risk. A kind of cultivated feral savagery. I've never seen a movie capture madness on this scale. After all, movies must contain an element of plausibility to move us. Reality here is beyond all plausibility. And then the ones not on drugs. The new age vegan hipsters high on sunshine and ocean breezes who would accuse you of murder if you swatted a mosquito. Their words eerily reminiscent of the grandiose schizophrenic mad hatter beatific visions you have the privilege of hearing if you eavesdrop close enough to the streetwalkers of Portland. The hysterical urgency for change, a new world order, Otherwise, the sun will explode. The Earth's core will freeze over. If we don't all collectively change how we fundamentally go about our lives this very instant, the end is upon us. Get me a double cheeseburger with extra saturated fat pronto. A non-local man is at the beach, enjoying the day in whatever fashion he chooses, having a casual conversation about the weather and the clouds and how pretty as a peach this whole island is with a local man when he innocently inquires of the local man's wife the time. Non-local man to the woman. What time is it? Local man, with the brimming ferocity of an ancient warrior chief with a thousand of his best soldiers behind him, as if you just defecated on the burial grounds of his ancestors. You need to leave. Local woman, presumably the local man's wife, as if the Old Testament Yahweh is on the verge of having his way with you. Listen to him. Let's hope you don't struggle too much with reading nonverbal cues and such, which I admit I'm one to, because failing to read the writing on the wall here would doubtlessly earn you a free one-way ride a mile or so from shore, or a rendezvous with the pigs at a pig farm as the pig's meal, or in some other way find it necessary for your friends to post your picture among all the other missing persons posters you see inordinately, grossly, disproportionately posted around a spread out farm community of 50,000 people. Or how, or how about the woman who is a magnetic healer 
walks around with spoons and other sundry electrical devices sticking to her, claims to have healed millions on TV on the mainland, claims millions of people pound on her door for healing, yet complains of eating spoiled food because she can't afford ice for her cooler. It's in the vein of a common schizophrenic lament, nothing out of the unordinary refrain you hear from those suffering from that illness. But stories of a sim similar thread are heard in legion from these drugged up New Age yahoos, not to disparage all New Age practitioners. I know some who are wonderful people, but their screwball ilk are everywhere here. So long as they have an audience of one, give them some time to be themselves, and they will reveal the quirkiest forms of madness. Walk down the wrong street and look in the direction of the wrong house, and someone with an assault rifle will be standing on their porch pointing their gun at you. I've heard stories of the one-way boat ride and pig farm repeated by at least half a dozen people. Keep your eyes peeled. Always be cognizant of where you are and never utter a single critical word about anything to anyone you get the slightest whiff of a drug habit from. To speak of the average Hawaiian who lives on the west side where I'm at, the Kona Coast, where there's enough of an influx of tourist dollars to keep the crazies from taking over. So long as you treat the average Hawaiian with respect, show respect for the island and their ways, they will freely share information only a local Hawaiian would know. Places to see out of the way you would never stumble upon yourself. I find them to be a no-frills, upright, straightforward people looking only for respect for their way of life and basic consideration from you. If you disrespect a local Hawaiian, look out. You're in trouble. How big of trouble? You don't want to find out. By and large, it's the white people you need to be cautious of here. Do the mainland mental hospitals ship their hopeless cases here? It sure seems like it. The island is as beautiful as I remember it. The smells bring you back to where you first smelled them. The stark contrast between natural beauty and human kindness, aloha, which is here in abundance, and drug-induced, psychotic madness lurking around every corner is something I'm not sure what to behold. But above and beyond everything else, there is beauty. A feast for the, uh, a feast for the senses, eyes, nose, tongue, skin, in bountiful measure. A trip I'll never forget. When it comes to an end and I return to the mainland, it won't be with wistfulness, but a sense of fulfillment of a journey enjoyed and placed in the past without a sense of incompleteness, regret it's over, or longing for an extension. It happened, and all things must pass. George Harrison singing in my ear. And this change in me, as the engine of the impetus of our thoughts, remains a mystery to me. I don't think I'm the author of the source material of my life events, too. Perhaps obvious to some, but a recent revelation for me. I'm conscious of shifts in infinitesimal increments in my perception, with profound changes in my temperament and general outlook in everyday life, every six months or so. But where is the source of their cause? I choose what I use, I choose what use I make of the source material, but I don't create the source material. Specific thoughts come of their own accord, they appear in the mind, where they come from, I don't know. I think my will and persistence is the fuel for this mysterious source, but it doesn't provide the raw materials. When the, when the raw materials arrive, then we get to play with them and mold them and make a decision to act one way or another based on our value judgments of this information. LSD told me the residing place of the creative universal life force is outside the realm of physical, manifest of physical manifestation. Woo! What to make of that? Did I tell you I practice Reiki, hands-on vibrational therapy, power of intention? I know it through experience, but to qualify it with words or to establish a floating dogma to live by, which these New Agers take to the opposite extreme of fundamentalist Christian conservatism, proceed with caution. And what of the Jews when they were being herded into the gas chambers? Where was the power of intention then? What of their supplications to their idea of an almighty? Sometimes the insolent impertinence I detect in myself when waxing philosophical disgusts me. But the alternative, a vow of silence, 
to move through the ether meekly without expressing the parts of the enigma of life bombarding my consciousness would be akin to holding in a turd too long. Two scatological analogies in this epistle. Is two too much? Let nature have its way, with biological functions and pesky ontological musings. A calm has come over me, and a growing acceptance of my place in a no-man's land in society is slowly settling in. Trauma seeping out of my nerves on its own schedule, and I'm a grateful beneficiary. Life is beautiful. Postscript. I can't think of anything that compares to the feeling you get when you get your first whiff of the Pacific Ocean mingled with the perfume of tropical flowers when you first step off the plane. January 2014